Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share a dream with you that I was given on August 23rd, uh, just a few days ago. And the dream, I believe, is God showing us that we really need to understand his strategies for overcoming our adversary. And if we don't follow his strategies, that it could be cataclysmic for us, that it could be fatal for us and even others, uh, spiritually speaking, in, in the spirit realm. All right, so I'm going to share the dream and then what I believe the Lord has shown me concerning his word and how we are to strategically go about overcoming the adversary. So in this dream, I was at a school, um, like a middle school or something like that, and I was at the doorway going in and there were a couple uh, I think they were agents, like ATF agents, and there was an active shooter in the school. And I could see the active shooter in one of the classrooms. There were two classrooms, and the one there was one closest to me, and then the second one the active shooter was in, and there were children in both of the classrooms, and the, um, the shooter was standing in the second classroom with his gun pointed toward the first classroom. And so, the agents were looking to me for guidance. They they were very uh, ready to go in and take down the shooter and they were turning to me, just really anxiously asking me, what should we do, what should we do? And I was kind of surprised, first of all, that they were asking me, but uh, I was more surprised that they couldn't see the danger in just going in after the shooter the way that they wanted to, because I knew if they did that, that uh, this man would start shooting the children in, in classroom number one, and probably even in the room he was in. And so uh, I basically was just telling them they couldn't just go in and do that. And so when I woke up from the dream and began to ponder it, I felt the Holy Spirit was showing me that, okay, that there is a strategy when it comes to spiritual warfare. Now, the classrooms, I believe, are symbolic of God's children and at the very different levels of learning that his children are at. And the shooter is the enemy, and he has made his way in, okay? And so the, the ATF agents, I believe, are symbolic of spiritual warfare warriors, those in the body of Christ who are ready to go after the enemy and take him down. And they're, they're very anxious about it. They want to do it like right now. And the, the problem with, with having that, that mentality uh, in, in a real life situation or in uh, the spiritual warfare arena in the spirit world is that if we are not careful to follow the strategies that the word of God lays out for us, uh, we could end up causing ourselves more problems and harm to others and ourselves if we are not following God's strategies. And they are clear in God's word, his strategies for overcoming the adversary and overcoming evil are laid out for us. And I'm gonna go over some of these scriptures that tell us uh, exactly how to overcome evil. So if you want to turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to read verses uh, 8 through 12. And this is what the Apostle Peter tells us to how to strategically overcome evil. He says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling or reviling. But on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Okay, that's pretty clear. Uh, doing good, refraining from evil, being courteous, tender-hearted, compassionate. Okay, these are all things that will 
cause us to be light, to advance the light, to advance the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. It's our job to be light. And being light means doing what is right, doing what is good. Uh, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So our good deeds, doing the right things, are a way of advancing the light, advancing the kingdom of God. All right, and then in Romans, the Apostle Paul tells us, Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 18. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. All right. Now, I know some people don't want to be at peace with you. They might want to fight with you. They might not like you no matter what you try to do. But as far as it's concerned on your part, we need to be at peace with each other, with our neighbors, with our coworkers, with anyone who we cross paths with. It's our job, as the Apostle Paul lays out, to, to make that effort to live peaceably. And then, you know, of course, the Beatitudes, Jesus lays it out very clear his strategy for overcoming evil. And I'm only gonna cite a few scriptures from it, but if you go to Matthew chapter five, I'm gonna read verses 39 and then verses 43 through 47. Okay, so Jesus tells us, but I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. All right, now, just so that you don't misunderstand that scripture. I mean, Jesus isn't saying keep turning your cheeks back and forth one time, okay? He's saying if, he's, if somebody does you wrong one time, give them another chance. It's not to say be a doormat, lay down and let people walk all over you all the time, but give them another chance, okay? Uh, then verses 43 through 47, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And that's the Old Testament. But I say to you, love your enemy, yet love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Okay, so you should probably just go and read the whole chapter, um, all of Matthew 5. Jesus lays out all of these strategies. You don't resist an evil person. You don't argue with them. You just demonstrate kindness. You demonstrate uh, love, and you walk away from uh, somebody who is getting enraged because to uh, respond with that that like manner is only going to make matters worse. If you go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, it tells us, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. All right, so wisdom, walk in wisdom, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. There's, there's so many opportunities for us to engage in arguments, in debates, in anger, in frustration, in, and even in violence. And, and I, as Christians, we need to understand that that is not how God has taught us through his word to live our lives, okay? At the, the scriptures I cited, and those are just a few, uh, tell us how we are going to overcome evil. We overcome evil with good. You, you don't repay evil for evil, you repay evil with good. Because if you repay evil with evil, that's adding to the darkness. And then you're pushing the darkness forward. So we are now becoming a part of the enemy's purposes and, and his agenda. So we have to be so careful, church, you know, in, in these different arenas, you know, and I know the political arena is a hotbed right now for everybody to share and voice opinions. And, you know, it just, there's so many, so much controversy there. I encourage you to hold your peace and to be very careful in engaging in discussions concerning those things because, again, it's going to be very difficult 
to stay at peace and operate, walk in love, operating in kindness and compassion as we're instructed to, if you're trying to push forward your own opinion. We aren't called to advance our opinions. We're called to advance the kingdom of God. And we do that by being the light, okay? Doing good deeds and by being the salt, working to, to preserve all the good things that God has established on this earth, okay? So please take all this to the Lord in prayer. Ask him for confirmation and just keep seeking the heart of the Lord daily and, and ask for his help to walk in love and kindness, mercy. These are not things we can do on our own. This is These are supernatural Holy Spirit fruit and qualities that only come to us by the life of Christ in us. So don't think that you can produce these things on your own. It's, it's going to have to come through the life of Christ in you. So we have to daily be seeking the Lord and his heart, asking him to, you know, cause his heart to rise up in us and his life to be lived through us. All right. We can't do it on our own. I hope, I pray that this message has blessed and encouraged you. And as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.